Good evening, everybody. I just want to get some some water poured here. Filming these videos can uh, really dry the old throat out. Put that up there where I can get to it. Okay, so tonight's video is on Jennifer Roberson's Lady of the Forest. Now, <laughs> I have to be honest, I generally, generally speaking, I avoid books with covers like this because it's generally just an excuse to have loads of explicit sex in a book. That's basically the only reason that um, that books like this tend to exist. Um, now, the funny thing is, I picked this up at a flea market a few years back, well, quite a, quite a number of years back, uh, in anywhere from 2008 to 2010. Um, and it's basically a Robin, it's a Robin Hood story. Um, so we have the two, there are kind of two different storylines for the two characters. We've got um, Robert of Loxley, Robin Hood, who comes back from the Crusades in Jerusalem, and he is suffering, basically. He is shell-shocked. Um, he doesn't recognize the, the homeland, really. You know, he's he's having flashbacks. He is battle-scarred and, um, you know, there's this just his homeland isn't quite the same as it was when he left. And um, then we have Maid Marian, who is basically on her own. She's her father is is dead. England is pretty much in ruins while King Richard is being held captive. And um, Marion is kind of thrown into a game full of political in intrigue where she literally cannot trust anybody. Um, and these two characters kind of have to um, learn to live with, um, with this world. Now, of course, it's a Robin Hood story, so we know what Robin Hood is going to do. Um, he does eventually do what Robin Hood is known for doing. He starts, um, it gets to a point, this whole story kind of gets to a point where um, England is basically at breaking point. And um, Robert of Loxley, or, you know, Robin, as his mother used to call him, basically puts together a group of people and they start causing trouble. They start stealing um, from all the sort of wealthy the, as the, the saying goes, he robs from the from the rich to give to the poor. Although in this case what he's doing is he's actually putting together a um oh <sighs> itchy nose. Um he's putting together a war chest. The people that have Richard captive have demanded a ransom for his release. And so what Robin is doing is he's putting together a war chest of all the stuff that he's taking to send in as payment of the ransom. Um, overall, it's, I mean, this is a really good book. Um, Marion is a strong female character who actually gets in on the action uh, towards the end. Um, I think it's towards the end of the book where, you know, Robin is pretty much about to you know, be killed, 
and she takes a what is it here? Let me just see. Uh, she um, Guy of Gisborne is injured earlier in the book and ends up on crutches and as uh, William de Lacy, the sheriff of Nottingham, is about to kill um, Robin Hood, she smashes the um, crutch in one of Gisborne's crutches um, behind the sheriff's knees, which puts him on the ground, and then she smashes his arm with the um, with the same crutch. So she basically brings the same crutch down on his sword hand, uh, which breaks his arm. <laughs> Um, which is pretty cool. Um, this book's kind of got that whole, the action in this book is fantastic. And, um, you really do get a sense of, of what Robert of Loxley is going through. When he comes home, he has these instances where he just sits, and he, he ends up trapped in his memories of what happened at Jerusalem. Um, and you get to, to kind of see that, and even if you're not a soldier, you sympathize with that, and you understand what he went through, because it's... It's clearly laid out. This guy went through hell and high water to get home. Um, of course, when he ends up at home, he ends up in a completely different kind of um, kind of battlefield. <laughs> um, the political intrigue um, is very well done. I don't think I've ever read a book like this where the political intrigue. Um, kept me invested and, and actually kept me interested so that was quite something um, overall a very good book likable characters there weren't that many cons that I can remember um, I read this a little while ago again but I mean and this could just be me, you know, kind of being biased because it is one. It is actually one of my favorite books. Um, but anyway, I, I honestly I can't see any problems. I didn't have any problems with this book. Um, it was pretty good. There was some maybe there were some pacing issues. There were some sections where the book just kind of dragged on, but. Um, Overall, a really good book, and if you're like a huge fan of, of Robin Hood stories in general, this would be a good one to pick up. Um, it looks as though it's part of a trilogy, because on the inside of the front cover, it says, don't miss these other novels, and we have Lady of Sherwood and Lady of the Glen listed on the front. Whoops. I'm just trying to get that in my frame here. So, Lady of Sherwood and Lady of the Glen, and the way I understand it is those are um, other books, I think, in the same series. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I haven't read those. I've only read this one. But, um, yeah, I mean, this one, this one took me a little while. I mean, generally, if I get really into a book, it'll take me... A day or two. This one actually took me about a week and a half to get through because um, I had long, like, swaths of nothing to do during the day. So, of course, when you're a bookworm like me and you have nothing to do and you have a, a brand new book that you just picked up, then um, 
yeah, of course you're going to sit and read. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Lady of the Forest. This was a damn good book, and if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, it's just... It's just great, you know? You, you believe every word that these characters are saying. You believe in the world that has been set up here. Um, so, Roberson did a really good job putting this together. Um, I mean, I... I looked at this... I've recently finished my, my writing my second novel, and there are a number of problems with it. And, I mean, I guess this could be like the third or fourth draft, but, I mean, this kind of gives me something to shoot for in terms of a first draft um, of a manuscript. It's just something that is super streamlined with, you know, few, if any, plot holes, you know. Maybe that's a bit of a, a bit of a, a stretch goal to get to. <clears throat> but anyway, those were my thoughts. If you have read it, let me know. If you haven't read it, then I highly recommend it. Um, it's definitely worth a read. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's pretty much everything. Oh, that's better. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, and um, I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.